least is uh, in charge of uh, Muse Bianchi. That means that we will speak uh, uh, about travel manager project. Uh, what is travel manager project? Uh, what goals does the travel manager want to achieve? Uh, how do we train students uh, as future tour operator? training future uh, tour leaders and guides, skills for uh, future travel reporters, new business ideas, and creation and use of digital tools uh, to enhance the project. Uh, the last uh, meeting of our uh, course regards the travel reportage. So what is a travel reportage and the characteristic of a responsible reportage? We will host Marco Bonuomo. He's uh, currently in charge of uh, Sardegna Liberté. Uh, it's an Italian uh, tour operator based in uh, Sardinia, but uh, Marco traveled a lot uh, all around the world in a responsible uh, way by bicycle with uh, his uh, girlfriends. At the end, uh, we will have uh, another meeting, as I said, uh, that means a meeting, um, a sharing of experiences. So each country has one hour to present examples of responsible tourism. Uh, what we suggest uh, is uh, to host uh, people, uh, not to speak you directly uh, about a project in your, uh, in your country, but if possible, to host the project leader or um, someone uh, uh, really involved in uh, that project, because we think that it could be uh, better. Uh, you have one hour, so uh, it's up to you to decide uh, if you will host uh, two, three or four, for example, uh, um, different uh, uh, projects. This is up, uh, up to you. This is the calendar. Uh, we have made uh, a little change, as you, as, you, as you know. So we will start uh, today, and uh, in a more or less uh, one, uh, one month, we will uh, end this part of, uh, of, our, um, of our project. Uh, at the end, uh, just to remind uh, that uh, we, we will uh, have uh, 12 teachers for uh, four for each partner school, six operators in the tourism sector, that means uh, Betanias, Vitizere Kianing, and uh, uh, in the future, the, the Turkish tour operator, and two youth workers uh, experienced in non formal education and with a potential previous experience. Uh, so this is uh, just uh, a very a little uh, reminder to all of you. Uh, now I think that we can uh, start, uh, start with the first activity, uh, the, the first concrete activity uh, of our uh, project. So I will uh, ask to, to Filena, uh, mm -hmm. she's an Italian teacher, to, to start with the first uh, activity. Thank you, Filena. Yeah, okay. Thank you to you, Fabrizio, and uh, welcome everybody, and uh, happy to meet new uh, protagonists uh, of, uh, of this project and uh, adventure. And um, just to, okay, who, um, who comes uh, uh, from Turkey besides Fatma? Okay, Fatma, nice to meet you again. And uh, with you, Fatma, other, um, other people? Other from, people. Uh, yes, who are? We have, we have Tamar, Bekir and Chala. Okay, nice to meet you. And from Iceland, and uh, besides the KDR, yeah, um, members, other people from Iceland, uh, okay? Nice. Nice. Okay, thank you, thank you, okay. Nice to okay. meet you. Nice to meet you, right, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, welcome on board, this is, <laughs> welcome on board, okay. Thank you. Now, and welcome on board, yeah, the, the first activity and the, let's say the lead-in activity is uh, something belonging to you and uh, your experience. Um, what was the journey of your of uh, of a lifetime? The great journey, the greatest and best journey you have uh, you have um, done up to now. Uh, this is my my question, and I well, uh, of course, uh, if you. Mm, uh, we hope we can uh, we can share great experiences. And the, 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 so the, the break, in order to break the ice, um, I I can start with my uh, with the journey of well, with the journey of a lifetime. Uh, it was um, well, it was 15 years ago, 
and um, my husband and I um, were on the mountains and uh, we were able to climb um, the very high mountains in the Dolomites and uh, it was quite a hard um, trip because um, it was very long and also the um, the altitude was uh, was an important altitude. Um, it was uh, it lasted um, twelve years, twelve uh, twelve hours, and um, and on the way back uh, to our car, um, it was very late. So we walked um, through the wood, but we we were walking at night, and um, the moon. And showed us the, the way to follow. Otherwise, I'm sure we we could uh, have got lost, but it didn't happen. And then um, the following day, we woke up very early and uh, we could admire an incredible dawn. Believe me, the most incredible dawn I've ever seen up to now. Very romantic, but also very tiring, I must say. And uh, this was the journey of my life. Mm? This was the journey of uh, of a lifetime. I think it, uh, well, never say never, maybe in the future, even a better one. Why not? But at the moment, this is the journey of a lifetime. And what about you, Fatma? And then Fatma, you will, and then this is part of the game. And then you will name someone who's speaking after you. Okay? Oh, okay. Fair okay. game. Okay. So, um, uh, two years ago, I had my first experience with eco villages. So, it's uh, another kind of, uh, you know, for me, it's a, another kind of responsible tourism. And I was chosen to this project, but um, I was too scared because it was in the middle of nowhere in France and I didn't even know how to get there. But uh, luckily they picked us from uh, the nearest town. And when I went there, I was shocked. I was telling myself like, uh, what are they, are, are they primitives? And uh, there was uh, less electricity and uh, they were washing everything with their hands and using the machines very limited. Uh, and after spending there some time, I, I felt that I was really alive because we were too much um, too, too much concentrated about our daily rush and trying to finish all the works, daily works, and uh, sleeping with stress. And there, it, it wasn't so clean. They were sleeping with the spiders. And I remember once taking a shower with a grasshopper. <laughs> it, it was kind of crazy, you know. I've never imagined myself like this before. And... Um, I really felt that I was alive for the first time in, in that eco village in France. And uh, while I was leaving, I, I cried a lot, really. It, it was really painful for me that I, I was telling myself, I don't want to leave this place. And uh, I was going to go there last year with another project, but because of the COVID, now we postponed it. I, I hope I will go there again, and I'm looking forward to it, really. It's another kind of experience I would like everyone to to experience and uh, share. So this will be my second project idea, I think. So we will see what I can do in the future. So let me choose someone, someone. Yes, choose someone. <laughs> it's difficult difficult okay armburn would you like to talk armburn can you hear us i think he's not available at the moment do you want me to choose another person uh, yes i yeah maybe he yeah mm -mm. okay yeah. can i pass it to norberto then Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, okay. It's difficult to to tell. Uh, I had the opportunity to travel a lot in many places and different ways with students, with friends, with the family. So it depends. <laughs> but I think if I would pick one, it's um, uh, it's Guatemala, uh, where I've been in 2000. I think it was six. Yeah, 2006, and I was with my wife. And um, it took me months to plan, 
and the goal was to spend some eight days uh, in the in the highlands where you have uh, these small villages with people li living still according to the traditional culture. And uh, I, I planned everything in order uh, to follow their local markets. So there were a number of people that were moving around the highlands with their stuff because they were uh, merchants. And so they were actually doing uh, one market after the other at a distance of one, two or three days. And we were actually moving along with them using public transportation, as most of them were doing as well. Um, it has been amazing because uh, that trip put together everything, I think. Uh, beautiful landscapes, um, culture, a massive difference between my, my lifestyle, my way of living, my way of thinking, and theirs. Um, they were not desperate that we're not so poor that we're starving but you you were really seeing the different lifestyle and um, made me think a lot so that eight days were really full of emotions and it was very tiring so you just moving local buses so i had to sit maybe uh, there were seats for two that were usually occupied by three people. So we were all squeezed. At times someone was sleeping on you. At times you had someone that had chicken on the back and that they were just, <laughs> so you were hearing all the smell. And <laughs> But that, that was part of the trip. The colors, the culture, the, the flavors, <laughs> the sense that you were feeling. So it was uh, really uh, 360 degrees. <laughs> Um, feelings of every sort that I really enjoy. I will never forget that eight days in Guatemala. So that that's that's my uh, that's my journey. And I will leave now on uh, well, I will leave that on. Um, uh, I don't know. Let's have uh, uh, Tamer. Can I can I call on you, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, <clears throat> my name is Tamer Kırlı from Turkey. I am accommodation and travel teacher uh, in Evliya Çelebi Vakanesal and Technical Anatolian High School. I went to uh, Sevilla, Spain two months in uh, 2010, uh, Leonardo da Vinci project. Uh, project. And uh, I went to Lille, France, 15 days in 2010 uh, with Leonardo da Vinci project. Uh, I am a teacher in, in Turkey. I, I don't remember uh, 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 travel. Uh, that's enough. Not in France, not in Spain. No? I don't remember. <laughs> Only with students. OK, this is the yeah. memory. <laughs> Okay, Tamer. If you want, if you want, Tamer, you can pass on someone else. Oh. Uh, Porstein Surmeli. Kim? Hello, thank you. Surmeli. Ah, oh. uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Surmeli, Surmeli is Turkish, so it's a very good connection. Yes. Uh, but I'm I'm a teacher from Iceland, and uh, can, can I can I mention a, like a domestic trip because I can hear that you are uh, talking about. <laughs> okay, yes, and I can hear your uh, uh, your examples are like Guatemala eight days, are like very uh, uh, very uh, exciting trips. But I, I want to mention one trip that uh, really changed my. Uh, view on nature here in Iceland is, is just a one day trip on the highlands, uh, to the highlands of Iceland that really uh, puts everything in perspective for me regarding the, uh, the nature and me as a human being walking on this earth, uh, this earth in the highlands, which is sort of, you, it seems like no human has touched it, but People have definitely done it, but uh, that it sort of made me 
uh, think about how important it is for me to walk on this earth with uh, gratitude and with respect to the nature. So that sort of that one day on the highlands just uh, put everything in perspective for me. So that really stands out for me in this regard. So I want to uh, pass it on to uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Becky. Can I do that? Oh, you can. <laughs> so back to Turkey, I suppose. Think so, Bekir? Yeah, but I don't know if he's there. Uh, Bekir, you make his mute. You yeah. make his mute. I don't know, Bekir, if you can hear us, you need to unmute yourself. Your microphone is off at the moment. Okay, let, let me call him. I don't know. What Maybe it's better to choose another person. Maybe I will. I will uh... Magdalena, can I pass it over to you? Yeah, why not? Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Magdalena. I'm representing Kelir Academy School. Uh, I'm a project manager. Uh, but I'm Polish, and I moved to here in 2006. And I would say that my lifetime journey started that day <laughs> when I moved to Iceland. Uh, it was exactly 24th of November 2006. I remember as it was yesterday. Uh, I moved to here without knowing anyone, uh, strictly to work for six months. As you see, I stayed for longer. <laughs> I never came back to Poland to live there. Um, and I would have to say that, um, yeah, I'm learning every day. And this is this is really like learning process for me since that day uh, about the culture, about the nature here. And um, Iceland surprised me every day. I would say that... Um, Every time when I'm driving out of Reykjavik, where, where I live, the, 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 the sightseeing changing, the, 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 the weather changing, all the, uh, the view and how I see the same area maybe 20 different times, and it has a huge impact on me. Um, and, but one, one thing that definitely I want to mention, it was, uh, it was my trip to the glacier. When I was walking on the glacier, it is Solheimer Jokut, and uh, it made me cry a lot. Uh, the sounds of the glacier itself, it was a very powerful experience, I would say. Um, and I will stop here, and I would like to pass on to someone, and let me go to, I think, Italy, uh, Loredana. Yes. Hi to everybody. Uh, I don't like speaking English. <laughs> so um, I I made a lot of uh, journey with school, but uh, uh, I want to to speak about uh, a, an important journey I made uh, a lot of uh, year ago. Uh, I went uh, to Jerusalem and uh, with uh, my husband and uh, my friends and uh, visited the area of uh, the, the land of Christ. Uh, uh, it was uh, a, 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 a spiritual journey and uh, I, I had... Uh, the opportunity to meet uh, the living uh, pietre, come si dice? Stones. Uh, Stones. Living stones, because uh, we met uh, um, the um, patriarch of Jerusalem, we met the uh, custode, custode um, keeper, housekeeper, uh, keeper, uh, yeah. Yeah, of um, Holy Holy Land. 
we met um, a, a kibbutz, uh, the person who lived in the kibbutz, we met uh, a, a community where uh, um, Jew, Jewish, uh, Jewish and um, Muslim live uh, um, together in harmony. And um, we, we met, uh, we uh, had uh, a dinner with uh, um, a, a family uh, who uh, lived in Jerusalem, uh, a Mus um, Christian um, um, Ar Arab, uh, Arab. Hmm? Yeah. Arab family and the holy between uh, um, Muslim and uh, and uh, it was uh, it was a very uh, important experience uh, because we met a lot of people um, and um, I remember I remember uh, uh, this journey with uh, um, the conoscenza uh, knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. no, uh, Loredana, knowledge of that land and the knowledge also how can people live in peace, though different, yes, 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 different yes. people and so tolerance, the value of tolerance in uh, in life. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And so, Loredana, now, who would you like to involve oh. in this case? Annalisa. Can I turn my... Uh... Can I take my turn? Oh, Bekir. Okay, so let's go back to Bekir. Bekir, if you are ready, yes. Yeah. Uh, Annalisa, you can. Okay, thank you. It's not uh, sometimes uh, some problems may can happen. May happen. Uh, so, uh, first of all, before telling about my uh, first journey experiences, uh, I want to say several words about uh, this project. Uh, uh, First of all, uh, I'm an English teacher uh, in my school, like Fatma. Uh, I would like to thanks to, especially, I would like to thanks to Italian and uh, Icelandic uh, partners, as they are gathering us in the frame of such a project. Um, of course, I am grateful to Turkish project coordinator Fatma uh, for. Uh, inviting us uh, to work together in such a project. Um, in past uh, years, I was just involved in several European uh, projects. We, good, uh, we, we had good things, uh, good experience, sorry, on project applications. We did good things with European colleagues. Uh, I must say, uh, I visited the website of uh, uh, the Google Partners uh, partnership uh, profile is perfect as well. Uh, each partner has a unique um, in their uh, respective area. Uh, this project idea is, I think, uh, uh, a perfect one. Um, it's uh, very, uh, very suitable, with, uh, compatible uh, with uh, our uh, occupational area of uh, our school. Um, our students get uh, theoric and practical education on tourism industry, but uh, that's not enough for the career development, I think. Uh, uh, we are just offering vocational training under two categories, as hospital, hospitality, and food and beverage. Um, besides this, they need to learn, uh, uh, they need to learn about uh, different segments of uh, tourism. Um, our students uh, are uh, foreigners to uh, these con con uh, concepts like uh, sustainable tourism, responsible tourism. Uh, so uh, most, our most, uh, most students come from the disadvantaged area, 
this project will be excellent one in the sense of um, aware, uh, raising awareness uh, how to develop good behavior um, pattern for uh, tourism. So uh, the other things uh, I must say, uh, as we all know, uh, Anatolian geography interrupt you will you um yeah is um i, I mean I, I want to say that i want i mean uh, our students uh, uh, has many things to learn about uh, responsible tourism they need to uh, choose uh, good behavior for environment or uh, cultural activity that was interesting for me thank you uh, very good 
Very good, Bikin. Now, will you pass pass on to someone else? So we can go on okay. with that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Sorry, I'm checking the uh, list. Uh, um, who must be? Who must be? Uh, Magdalena Maria. I think I think yes. Yeah, she spoke when you when you couldn't hear us, so she she already covered the part when you were okay. not connected. Don't worry. Theodore, uh, Theodore Arotti. Who, who is that? Sorry, Vicky. Iron Ellison. Iron Ellison. Okay, Thor. <laughs> For you, yes. Uh, I I found one. Right. Uh, I, I think you're talking to me right now. Thor, Thor Ellingson, everybody call me Thor. Hello, guys. I'm, I'm from Iceland, and, and when we start looking at responsible tools and, and uh, our experience in that field, there's so many tips that come into mind. But uh, I'm just going to have it a short one. Uh, I'm, I'm really trying to choose if I should choose Iceland, Italy, or Peru. But uh, I'm gonna jump to Peru now for a eight-day trip. I went to Peru with a, a university that I was working with in, in uh, US, and we went to Machu Picchu uh, to see how they did everything up there to keep the place responsible. It was amazing, and, and what really stands out of that trip that really made it something was all the awesome, great food experience that comes with it, uh, and. Uh, that's got me think, got me to think a lot about how can we do better in tourism all around. Really, doesn't matter where we are going in this. We always have to be responsible. And, and a lot thought a lot about that. I'm not gonna have it any uh, longer. So I'm gonna say, I think I think I say, Kakla Kaya. I'm not sure. Inshallah. Okay. Chala, okay. This is how you pronounce yes. it. Chala. Chala. Yes, that's true. Chala. Mm -hmm. Chala. Okay. Hello again. I'm from Turkey. I'm an English teacher, and uh, I'm of Fatma. And uh, when it comes to the journey of my life, I can say that I was an Erasmus. Student student too when I was at university. Uh, I lived in Poland for like seven months. Actually, uh, I had uh, some experience to uh, see some of the cities there. By the way, my internet is bad. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. We can. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm happy. And, uh, but one of my journey that I can't forget, I think it was uh, my trip to Prague because uh, it was spontaneous one. And we, me and one of my friends, uh, we just decided to go there in like one hour. And then we packaged and we didn't know what to do, but uh, we still continued to plan this trip and uh, went there by bus. And it was amazing. It's really worth, uh, I can say that. Yeah, I like it so much. Okay, Chana. Then, pass on to. Uh, I think now I need to choose someone, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, may I say, um, I think Magdalena uh, talked about it. So yes, right. Norbert. Yeah. Right, and already he already told us about his journey. Maybe. May I suggest Tura? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, why not? 
Tura, thank you. Hi. Tura, yeah. Okay. Um, um, uh, responsible tourism is, is uh, one of my favorite su subjects uh, to talk about and work with. Um, for me, when traveling, it's all about experience, experiencing the uh, the local, um, the food, the people. Well, I have my bucket list and I want to see things, but what's rememberable is it's what I ate and who I met and, and how they uh, influenced me. Um, and um, that is something that uh, responsible tourism is is all about. Is is maybe um, giving the our visitors or our guests the opportunity of getting to know something that they didn't know they wanted to know. <laughs> in that sense, um, here for me, when when traveling in Iceland, it's it's about um, the same thing in in nature. It just uh, it's something that that um, has or affects your body, your mind, your soul, and 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 that's something you you will remember. Um, now it's what's very uh, near to us today is is an eruption. <laughs> it's a volcano, um, and and it's it's. Uh, it's a place where you 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 can visit, but uh, working in responsible tourism, it's uh, you have to help people to uh, travel and kind of help them to, to do it in the right way, the safe way, and 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 if you just travel um, with. Uh, and and have have time to travel. For example, going into nature, sit down, and listen to nothing. Listen to the nature. It kind of gives you a new experience on on how what's going on. And and it's something you don't do when you're you're full on working. Everyday life is just time is precious, and you just just go and go and go and and just try to to go through the day. But when you when you want to uh, put together a tour uh, that has an influence on on people as on the same time that you are helping them to uh, fulfill their bucket list, um, it's something that people will treasure forever, and they would keep on coming, and they were they will they will help you to do better and, and be better in everything that you do as a tour tour operator. Um, and being responsible is is it's uh, taking in all the 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 chain. I mean, your the the marketing, what kind of material you're sending out, what kind of pictures you're sending out, and and what you're saying every step of the way. And when you're putting together a, a package, traveling in an area, taking a round tour. Um, are you thinking about uh, stopping, like go into the the area, go into the local uh, restaurant? Uh, are you giving the the visitors the opportunity of 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 kind of being a part of of, of life, how it is today in the area? Um, it's going to take time. I mean, it's. Uh, uh, do you want to do a five-day tour or a week with the opportunity of just giving yourself some extra time visiting um, an exhibition or visiting a nature site? It's, uh, time is, is precious, I know, but time is also something that people will appreciate when, when traveling, is that you're not doing too much in a short time um, and I, I, I think that this opportunity that we are doing together in, in this international project this is something that we can do together and, and do better so we have to start somewhere and, and to change the world and to change behavior so it's uh, 
crash course. <laughs> I'm not asking for much, just just changing the world. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, dude. I'm who's now, next? Yeah. Who's next? Um. I know Arbin is left. Is there someone else? No, no, I'll Jesse, take it. You want to take next? Yeah. Yes. Hi there. Hi, folks. Uh, Who we are? <laughs> yeah. And here are the results from the Icelandic jury. Um, now, uh, I, I actually want to continue with, with what Thura was talking about. Um, because, um, and just from my own experience, because usually up until now, because I've traveled quite a lot, and I've been traveling between A and B. I go from my place to the place of of, uh, of destination, and the travel period is something that I've ignored because it's only I'm just trying to get as quickly from place A to place B uh, as possible. Uh, that is until, uh, and I want to build on what Tura was talking about. Uh, that is until I walked uh, part of the Camino de Santiago uh, last year. Actually, in 2019, um, because there the travel itself is the journey between A and B. It is not the place of destination. Uh, it is not the end goal un until you obviously arrive in uh, in Santiago. But it is uh, the traveling every day, uh, the hiking. It just gave me a totally new perspective on on. Uh, the meaning of travel, um, because we are so we are so focused on the ideal place that we're traveling to, uh, the sandy beach or the palm or the, the the swimming pool or or the snowy mountains or something like that that we that we ignore and we lose focus on how important the journey is. Um, so that was, that was a, a, a revelation for me. And, and I think uh, it, 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 it relaxed me that, that it, it was okay not to um, think always about the destination, but just to enjoy the moment. Uh, but it also gave me a chance to, to experience both culture and, and people along the way, which is kind of responsible tourism, I, I would think. So yeah, that, that's my, that's my that's my take. Who's left? Is anybody left? Italian, Italy, Italy, Italy represent Italy. Italy. Italian representative. Vincenzo is still You disappear from the screen, but he's there. Vincenzo, it's up to you. Vincenzo. Vincenzo. <laughs> One wife. Oh, come on, let's talk about it. Come on. You prefer to marry someone. Is it in Italy? Do I have one wife? Okay. <laughs> That's it. Vincenzo, will you, will you tell us about a, a special journey, a special experience, or would you like to pass on to someone else? O passi la, la palla a qualcun altro? 
passo la palla. Annalisa. Ok, Annalisa. Yeah, thank you to you, Vincenzo. Ok, Annalisa? No? O oh, Giulia? Yeah? Giulia, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's Annalisa is, is not uh, is yeah. currently unavailable, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay, so you, nice, nice to meet you all. I'm Julia. We didn't meet last time as I joined now this this training course. And I am from Iche, as you may see from my name on, on this program. And the lifetime journey, actually, there will be so many for such different reasons, but... I will mention uh, a trip I did to Ethiopia because it was more kind of uh, probably emotional because I went there to meet part of my family uh, and some of them I have never met before. So it was kind of special because I could really, first of all, it was my first trip to Africa and so I could experience the the culture and also to to meet Uh, my relatives. So that's why it was a uh, kind of experience, unique experience uh, for me. I don't want to take longer and I don't know if someone else is missing except Annalisa to... No, only Annalisa and Fabrizio. And Fabrizio if uh, Fabrizio, Fabrizio, okay. Yeah, the two of them. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, as you know, uh, because of my job, uh, I travel a lot, so... Uh, It's not easy to decide uh, which one of my journeys, uh, uh, my lifetime journey. But uh, uh, if I have to, to choose one, uh, I remember in uh, uh, maybe 2015, uh, I was in uh, Brazil in October for uh, because of an international uh, congress. Uh, of uh, of uh, social uh, tourism and um, the organizer hosted me for a weekend uh, on the ocean in uh, Bertioga uh, not so far from uh, from uh, San Paolo for Sao Paulo uh, what i remember uh, i remember uh, a very enormous and uh, deserted beaches uh, really really enormous uh, a very um, uncontaminated uh, nature uh, um, it seemed uh, to me like uh, a paradise on earth uh, and uh, one day uh, we went uh, uh, into the forest in the middle of the forest uh, to meet uh, an uh, indigenous community uh, a very uh, but very very poor people uh, but uh, uh, a very happy people Uh, really happy with a huge smile with an incredible uh, an incredible uh, dignity and uh, i remember that uh, at that moment uh, i i realized uh, in a concrete way that uh, uh, we don't need material things to be happy uh, and it was um, It's not easy to describe this. Uh, you, you have to live this kind of uh, situation, but it was uh, really, really unique. Uh, so I know that uh, we need uh, uh, not only material things, but uh, uh, different things. But uh, when you when you see uh, the concrete life of uh, of people, young people, uh, old people, uh, uh, men, women, and so on, uh, living together into a forest. Uh, Uh, more or less without nothing uh, uh, it's make an um, an incredible impact and so uh, if i have to choose i choose this kind of uh, of journey okay thank you fabrizio and uh, if analisa is available good otherwise i think fabrizio we are perfectly on time and punctual so if you want you can start with your with the following section okay yeah. fabrizio Okay. Fabrizio, sorry, just just one thing that I forgot at the beginning. Um, of course, I cannot ask you to keep your microphones uh, in yes. mute mode when you are speaking. Uh, and we are recording the meeting, so your face will appear later on <laughs> on, uh, on on YouTube and other social media. If you have anything against it, uh, just keep your 
uh, web came off and or just let us know. Okay, so we will provide for that. Uh, sorry about it. I forgot uh, this announcement before. Fabrizio, you have attention, please. Okay, thank you, Roberto. Uh, so uh, we finished the first part of our uh, meeting. Now we are going uh, into the second part. Uh, that means that uh, we uh, will speak uh, uh, about what is tourism, mass tourism, over tourism, and so on. And we'll ask the two each a, uh, in person of uh, of Julia to to talk about these two uh, important points. And uh, uh, at the end of each point, we will have uh, uh, an exercise, but we will uh, give you more details uh, uh, after. So I think that Julia, you can uh, you can start with your first uh, presentation. Thanks a lot, Fabrizio. I don't know if you can see my screen or not yet. Maybe in one second. Uh, okay. If if you have, I mean, issue, technical issue, please stop me so we we'll figure it out. Uh, so I would like to uh, welcome again everybody. Uh, now we will start to uh, go a little bit more on the subject of this of this meeting but as you know this is a <laughs> itself is a journey this training so we will start with uh, some basic ideas uh, the the aim is not to going very much in all the details but to think about some uh, important features of tourism uh, and to go towards responsible tourism um, so can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. we can. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Great. So uh, I know some of you are a teacher of hospitality. So for some of you, these things might be uh, very familiar to some other of you might be not, not weird, but uh, probably you never stop to think about some of these issues. So first of all, what is, what is tourism? Uh, if we have to set a definition from the UNWTO, which is the United Nations World Tourism Organization, tourism is a social, cultural, and economic phenomenon which entails the movement of people to countries or places outside their usual environment for business or professional purposes, but also most, uh, most of all for personal and leisure purposes. This call are, these people are called uh, visitors and tourism has to do with their activities. So basically everything and nothing because we just uh, understood that it, the, the tourism implies traveling somewhere, some place which are unusual, which, which is not our, our usual place. Tourism can be classified uh, according to different uh, characteristics and uh, according to the scope, according to the boundaries. So we can talk about inbound tourism when it comes to people and visitors coming to a destination from outside or outbound, which usually involves um, international travel, but not only. And domestic tourism, if it's done uh, internally of your country or area or international, which of course means to another place another country, but also according to the scope of tourism, which can be uh, for religious purpose, for medical purpose, and most of all for business and leisure. So all this kind of tourism can be done actually in a responsible way, but this will be part of our uh, following training. So for the moment, we just would like to understand how many kind of tourists, how many different types and classification we may have according to the scope, according to the boundaries, and so on. Also an important feature of tourism is the destination. So destination uh, can be something which uh, has its boundaries. So as we can see here, it's a physical space in which a visitor spends at least one night. It includes tourist products such as support services and attractions and tourism resources with one day's return travel time. It has physical and administrative boundaries defining its management and images as well as the, as well as the market um, presence. Local tourist destination incorporate various stakeholders often including a host community and can nest and network to form a larger, larger destination. So, 
the destination it's actually something which is not very uh, specific there is not only one definition but uh, we can say it has some kind of boundaries which might be administrative or more geographical as we may see in this picture the really famous destination of Cappadocia in Turkey it's not just one town or maybe uh, some national parks we know are uh, among different region and administrative boundaries but what's important is also the image of the destination like a national park or a more in general an area of uh, of, a, of a country so we can say basically that tourism it's a complex <laughs> quite complex sector it involves uh, not only the, the 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 touch points we came in contact with during our uh, trip and our holidays which is of course, like the accommodation sector and catering and so on. But it involves a lot of uh, actors we are going to see uh, better now, uh, both from the institutional side and both on the private and community side. And so on the institutional... Before you switch to the next slide, do you mind hiding the sharing bar there? So uh, because I'm taking oh yeah, sorry. Three shots. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, sorry. So uh, going to the institutional framework, uh, usually there is uh, an, an an entity, an authority on a country level, usually like the central tourist planning entity, which uh, we can say. It uh, belongs to the central government and it stays on a high level policy, uh, but but uh, it is related to a lot of other organizations we can see in this diagram in this in the tourism uh, ecosystem. And the central tourism planning entity usually set the tourism policies and plans, regulation and standards, but uh, it's also coordinate and cooperate with other uh, tourism enabling entities or other policy uh, policy authorities, like we can imagine the health sector or the defense or the environment, just to name a few. And of course, on on the on the lower side of this diagram, we can appreciate how it is important as well the input of the advocacy. Uh, groups which can be represented by association, trade unions, chambers of commerce, which also have a wider uh, range of action, but they are also involved in the tourist sector. And then, of course, uh, the, the more visible part, which are the private businesses and entities uh, we came through during the, the trip or the travel, which are the two operators, development companies, um, and so on. If we go to uh, to analyze the sector from a tourist perspective, it's still quite a complex one. So not only the institutional framework is a bit complex, but from the tour tourism user experience, we also have a variety of actors involved. So here, what we can see uh, in the top is the what is called the journey. The, the journey uh, the ca or the customer um, the customer does from the planning and booking phase up to the experience itself. And as we can see, there are several levels and layers that um, participate to create this tourism, the, the overall tourism experience. And we can distinguish mainly three levels. So on, on a macro level, there are, the, for example, the local and regional authorities, um, cultural institutions, which actually enable the, the overall uh, experience. While more on a local level, the meso level, there are organizations that support, uh, for example, um, we can find uh, local tourism authorities or DMO, destination management organization. And then on the micro level, we have the the actors that brings the direct added value to to build this entire tourism value uh, value chain 
In, in the example of a customer journey, we can see how many touch points uh, we can find through all the journey. So starting from the planning and booking phase, for example, what the customer, what the tourist in this case uh, came, come in contact with are, for example, uh, blogs or maybe online uh, magazines, social media and information. And throughout the journey, the touch points might be different and there are no two uh, journeys which are the same. Each person has its own, each traveler has its, has its own uh, journey. So just, just to sum up, to sum up uh, what we have seen, uh, the tourism experience, it's made by um, um, multiple actors, a very wide variety of actors, which can operate on three main levels and which can belong to tourism sector, but are also belonging to other sectors and the interaction and cooperation among these actors, it's it's very important and I have to say in many cases this is where actually the tourists and travelers find a gap. Uh, not this cooperation is not always perfect on the on the management side, destination management side, and sometimes also on the supplier on the micro level, uh, because of course the interaction are all from the moment the tourists come in the destination, everything he or she uh, come in contact with its part of the experience. So we can use the, the metaphor of theater to describe the, the tourism sector, which involves this wide variety of actors uh, and all of them can have a, a key role in, in making the experience. So even, even those that we may not see like uh, with disposal services or resource management, which are really, really important in the tourism sector, are, are all enabling the, the tourism experience and the sector uh, itself to, to exist. So I, I will stop for now. As you can see, I, I did not... As Fabrizio was uh, already sharing, we will now uh, have a more practical activities also to warm up a little bit. And uh, some of you, if not all of you, because I didn't have all the email addresses, should have received um, a brief exercises. And now Fabrizio is going to uh, divide us into three groups and divided in teams. Uh, the, the objective, the aim is to name a few of the actors involved in the tourism experience in the case uh, which has been assigned to you. Each group has a different case. And the objective is to name two or three actors for each level on the macro, meso and micro level. Uh, I recommend each group to select one spokesperson uh, who will present the final result in the plenary session. Now you have 20 minutes to working group and then each spoke person will have three minutes to, to show uh, other participants the, the result. In each room, in each classroom, there will also be a facilitator. So if you ever had some doubts, uh, there's one person there for you. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you, Julia. I'm not uh, so technological, but I think uh, I have done all. So uh, uh, we are into a free group, more or less of five uh, people, five, five, and six. Uh, I will uh, start uh, uh, the groups, and uh, I think that uh, everything will uh, work. Okay. So, uh, okay. Okay. So, welcome, welcome to this group. Uh, I've been assigned as the facilitator, so the moderator. I'm gonna hear. I'm here to help you, and then we'll see what is the. I think you have already received your assignment. 
have you nope okay then because it was i think they sent it by mail but let me check on that and i'm back to you in a minute okay I have just received it. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry, here I am. Yes, there was, there's was been a misunderstanding. They were supposed to send the exercise um, with an email to each of you. But anyway, not a big deal. I have it here. And I'm going to share my screen so you see what is it about. And I I'll write down you're what you're suggesting me. Um, oh, here it is. Okay, so this is the exercise. I'm actually reading it for the first time, as you do. Um, so this is actors mapping in tourism uh, value chain uh, two divided in teams. Try to name actors involved in tourism experience based on the case assigned. Try to name two or three actors for each level. Uh, micro means a micro. Okay, case John, a passionate of beach and archaeology, is visiting Sicily for a week during summertime, traveling solo. So uh, I, I think, did you understand what is the difference between micro, meso, and micro? Feel free to speak. Please, 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 please. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay sorry. Uh, I, I, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat for it, please? Can you uh, give us an explanation of micro, meso? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it is, uh, I, I again can share with you the... The slide that was presented before, since um, that that will result in a better understanding for all of you as you follow through. Um, here I am. We're gonna present. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now you're seeing the um, the slide that was presented before. With macro, we mean the national tourism authorities. Okay. So. Uh, national environment, culture, healthcare, communication and transport, national parks, trade unions, NGOs, etc. Uh, with uh, MESO, we have local tourism authorities, municipalities, and the local associations that take care of it. So waste management authorities, law enforcement, hospitals, regional parks, museums. And then with the micro, we mean tour operators, hotels, bed and breakfast, taxi drivers, tour guides. And so these are the supermarket, post office, local transport. So this, this is the distinction between the three areas. Now we have John, uh, passionate of beach and archaeology. So two very different things that goes to Sicily for a week. Um, okay. 
So we need to now name two or three actors for each level. But we can just have a uh, sorry. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to the former sharing. And I give you some minutes to think about. Example macro uh, airports, Norberto. Yeah. And micro uh, um, travel agency. Yes, good shops. Yes. Um, in macro uh, supermarkets. Uh, sorry, hold on a second. I'm on on. Wait a, wait a minute, please. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Tamir. I was I was just uh, receiving a call and I had to pick it. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the goal is uh, this um, this uh, addressing the stakeholders that are involved in the organization of this uh, trip for John. So this is what I was just told now uh, from Fabrizio. So the idea is really putting there. Uh, now, John has to go through Sicily, uh, visiting beaches and some archaeology. All right. And so this is, this is our goal now, to, to assign who is involved and at what level. But I don't know, uh, Sicily, but I know Adana or Istanbul. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, 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 it's very similar. So you're not far from it. I think the names of the archaeology sites will change, but there you are. <laughs> you got it. In macro uh, airport, because we are flying and... Uh, okay, great. Sicily. So I think I can put uh, airport here. Okay. In, in micro rent a car. Uh, I have a car. Okay, so car rental. Current, yes. Okay. Because uh, I have uh, go uh, fly and I I have a car. Excellent. In micro. Uh, yeah. Good. And hotel uh, macro or micro? Which one uh, for you, Norberto? Um, the hotels they mainly go into the to the micro area because usually uh, unless it's a big chain that maybe is, is involves the whole land but no it's usually so I would yeah I would put it here like uh, and there's no way to, to 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 put more than one so we put here hotel or let's say bed and breakfast okay B and B. Um, so it's always there. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah. pardon, maybe macro uh, 
Deluxe Hotel, Micro uh, Apart Hotel. Yeah, I think the idea is I'm not I'm I'm not so acquainted with that. Hotels should always be put into micro because even though you may have a chain, you're still addressing to the to that very specific hotel. I think I will ask Ju uh, Julia later on just to be sure about it. But maybe if you have like a big chain in I don't know in Turkey, and then of course I th maybe that chain could be put as a regional as a miso uh, thing. Uh, okay, I think in Meso we can think about something that is uh, related to the whole region. I uh, think restaurants. Yeah, uh, restaurants. I think are always. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think are always there in the. Um, yeah. Because uh, lunch and dinner. Sorry. Uh, lunch and dinner because. Yeah. Okay. So lunch, or oh, we can put it restaurants, etc. Okay. Um, so I think we need to think out about the macro, macro and meso because yeah. So we have car rental meso. Macro. Mm. Uh, how, how many minutes do we have? I think she said fifteen, right? Travel agency, uh, macro or meso? It's Travel micro. Agency. It's micro. Here it's micro, so car rental. We can put travel agency here. Nine minutes left. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I want to trip uh, Sigil, uh, Sigili. Yeah. <laughs> Example, museum or uh, another uh, travel thing. Okay, and uh, I think that if we speak about the museums, uh, I think if the organization is regional, uh, they, they could be put into the maison, okay? Yes. I think, I'm not too sure, but like, uh, okay. we can just call it tourism uh, uh, regional, Tourism uh, office. City tour, maybe. Sorry? City tour. Sigilia city tour. Ah, okay. Trip, yeah. Trip. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. I would also, I, I was thinking, I would also put the, uh, you know, the freeway. Um, how do you say uh, the the freeway uh, agency? I don't know if it's an agency, if it's a it's a company that they because I rent a car, but then I need someone that takes care of the streets and everything. Yeah, road, road, road association. Sorry, road. Road road association. Okay, so it's it's road. Patrol, um, yeah. what is the last word? Okay, road patrol uh, association. Okay, I think this this could be put in the in the museum. Okay, and then as for the macro, we have airport. Um, cultural cultural uh, ministry. Cultural ministry, yeah. Because macro. Yeah. Very macro. I think I will put it there. I will put it in macro. Okay. Two, three actors for each level. Um, we may have, okay, I think we're done, unless something better comes up. In your mind, but we have at least two or three. We have an airport, the cultural ministry for the macro, the regional tourism office, and the Sicily City Two Road Patrol Association, and car rental travel agents. Ah, uh, yeah. Actors mapping in tourism value chain to divided in teams striking in actors. 
Uh, I don't know if they want us to be specific or general, but um, yeah. Let me check on that. Let me check on that. Just Okay, sorry, I, I just, I confronted with my colleague, she, she too is doing it general, so we, we don't need to name the specific hotel or, or restaurant or so forth. So I think we, we're done. Any other idea, something? Okay, good. For real, I just love the way you, you, you put the, the logo behind you, that's fantastic. <laughs> it can become a pattern for the future. Yes, Tamer. Are, are there uh, uh, C in Sicily? Sorry? C, uh, are there C in Sicily? C, C, C. Maybe a ship tour. Ah, okay. A ship Maybe tour. one day or two day ship tour. Yes. Uh, for this, then we need something like, uh, then we can put car or even we can put it like boat. A boat tour, right. yes. Uh, boat car rental, okay. Yes. So this this could be nice, yes. Okay, and that is yeah. I think all right, and we, we have three minutes left, but I think we can get back to the to the main hall if you want. And okay, just let's decide who's going to speak for us. Um, I don't know. Uh, or, for it, would you like to to represent no. the group? Not this time. I have to be listening a lot. Uh, okay, in the all right. Of the day, so no problem. Next time. Okay. Uh, Ch 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 Chagla, sorry, the pronunciation is not oh, no. correct. Would you like to? Well, then Tamer, we we'll leave it on you. I thought Chagla, maybe she she's not she she she's not listening now. Uh, in macro, in macro, uh, very big uh, airport, uh, cultural ministry, and uh, I don't remember macro. Uh, what's this? Yeah, macro, macro are uh, uh, everything that is national mainly. So like national tourism authorities, national environment, culture, healthcare, communication. Yeah, see. And yes, national parks, yes. Yes, macro, national park. Yes. Good, very big. National park, so that it could be. Okay, that is all right. So I think that is it. Now we just, we, Sorry. Yes. yeah. By the way, uh, my internet is bad and I can't hear you sometimes. Uh, I would love to uh, present it, but uh, I think I'm not so master of these uh, subjects right now. Okay, no problem. Don't worry. Uh, Tamer, we'll leave it to you. Because you, you gave them the most of the idea. Thank you. Well, we will use it. We will use you next time, maybe. Okay. So well, thank you. <laughs> Tamer, since you you, did, you 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 had the most of the ideas there, we we leave it on you to express yourself in the for the group. Okay. No, no problem. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Agla, for. Okay. I think we're going. To my my English a uh, little bit. No, it's it's perfect. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's perfect. We we all speak.
Okay, we are all back here, I guess. Yes. Uh, and I'm sorry if, if it was not uh, clear enough, uh, but anyway, there are no right or wrong answers. This was just to think about of how complex is what for us is maybe just a day trip. Uh, if each group would like to present uh, the results, we can start with, um, I don't know, who are the spokes spokesperson? I don't know for group, but the group I was with is Magdalena, who are the other spokesperson? Uh, for, um, for, for our group is Tamer. Tamer? And the other one? Yes, uh, I. Uh, where is the uh, slides? And can I look? Strongly, okay. okay. Not now. Okay. Pardon. So sorry. Who's going to start with? We start with who? Okay. We we can start with. It. Is that the Tamer? Yes, the this person is. of this group. Okay, okay. We can we can start. Yeah. We can start with Tamer. Fine. Uh, yes. In uh, country macro uh, tourism in airport because uh, example I want to go to Sicily uh, with a fly. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to uh, Sicily and uh, uh, Sicily go and. Uh, I want to uh, a car rental is micro uh, and both uh, rent both rent is micro tourism uh, hotel and bed and breakfast uh, uh, it is uh, micro tourism uh, and I uh, lunch and dinner restaurants uh, ATC uh, and uh, micro tourism meso tourism region is region Tourism uh, and uh, Sicily city tour. Example: I want to see uh, Sicily uh, uh, museum or uh, another uh, historical uh, historical uh, parts. I want to see uh, Sicily city tour. Road patrol patrol asso association uh, meso tour meso tourism. And uh -huh. airport, uh, big one, uh, macro tourism and cultural ministry because uh, all of Italy uh, tourism's uh, cultural ministry and uh, national parks in uh, Sicily or another Italian uh, co country uh, cities. Uh, we want to see national parks is macro tourism. That's okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks a you lot. Thanks a lot, Tamer, and to, to the whole group. Yes, yes, I understood. And uh, thank you. Yes, as as we said, the the micro level is the level with which the tourist has direct contact. So, as you correctly say, the bed and breakfast, hotels, for example, and the macro level are the actors which enable the experience. Sometimes, even if we don't meet them, like the the culture, the culture ministry, for example, which is uh, we correct. And on the meso level, there are, let's say, halfway this uh, this kind of authorities. Thank you so much. So we can go through the the next one for Magdalena. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, let me just try to share the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, where is it? Is it here? Yes. I think is so. Going, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, in our case, we had a trip uh, to the Everest Base Camp in Nepal. Um, according to uh, our group, the mic micro, uh, the macro um, actors could be on the, on, the, on the national level, would be national authorities, uh, and also that counts as an embassy as well. As you probably will have to apply for a visa, for example, you have to get to there. So airlines could play also the 
um, the role in, in the process on a macro level. Uh, Meso, we, we mentioned local authorities, uh, marketing agency for the, for the area, for example, um, and on a mic micro, that would be all the uh, tour guides that are hiking with the tourists to the place, um, tour operators, all kind of travel agencies, uh, also local community that the tourists engaged uh, with during staying in the in the spot, like uh, accommodation, uh, some uh, stores, food, beverage, or. But I'm, I just came to. I think we can also mention other tourists. In on a micro level. Yeah, that's that's true. Mm. It's they are the people who the, the traveler come in contact with. I yeah. spe specifically appreciate. Uh, the, the emphasis on, on local community, which is made of service provider, but is made of just citizens uh, mm -hmm. and local villagers who may meet along the way, which also made your journey the one of a lifetime or maybe not. Everybody has, has, a, key, has a key role. I don't know if some of you ever experienced while traveling somewhere and maybe just ask someone for information along the road to receive a very nice and kind answer or, or a very bad one. That's also part of the experience. So thank you so much. And we go through the last one. Well, what about, uh, I can, for group two, um, I can share my, my screen. Who wants uh, to comment on that? Um, from group two? Fatma or Annalisa or Borsin uh, um, or uh, Tura. I can share it. I can share the screen if you want. Or no? Okay. I share and I comment on that. I understand. Okay. Just a second, man. Okay. Ah, no, maybe this one is better. Yes, and so um, if at a macro level, uh, thanks also to Fabrizio's opinion and contribution. Uh, he, Camilla? Yeah? Uh, you have the wrong this sheet. This is the inter up. one. Yeah, this is the inter one. Isn't it this one? Can't you see this yeah, one? But, but you filled one of it and you have to share the other one. Yeah, you remember, you killed uh, one of it. No, so, sorry, I... Uh, this is the, the, ver the version we can see is empty, but Filena, if you want to just uh, tell tell us, even okay. if you can see on the okay. screen, that's also fine. Okay, thank you. And so it's... Uh, um, at macro level, uh, it is uh, the mm, we we thought thanks to Fabrizio's contribution also to uh, help the system. It's essential if we think that our destination is uh, Thailand, because the case is that uh, there is a couple and they are a senior couple uh, who enjoys a relaxing culinary holiday in a warm climate, and uh, therefore they decided to spend one month in Thailand. That's why it's essential at macro level to know uh, about health system and um, embassies in, uh, at macro level can be helpful. And also promoting organizations, promoting uh, uh, tourism, organi tourism, promoting organizations. At meso level, uh, we thought of uh, uh, travel agencies, uh, flying companies, uh, and while at micro level, um, restaurants, accommodation, guides, and uh, um, since the couple is uh, interested in uh, uh, culinary uh, experience, also uh, some cooking, uh, following a cooking course, uh, a cooking course could be um, fit for them, could be the, the right choice for them. This was our, um, okay, how we uh, considered the task, how we did our task. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Milena. It was, uh, yeah, su super good. I, 
I, I mean, I appreciate the division the among the, the levels. And yeah, of course, as we're talking about the senior couple, as you mentioned, uh, side sector like the health one are also important. And just it come to my mind right now, uh, for example, the agriculture sector might be also relevant uh, according to the experience they would like to have with the local food and uh, genuine food. So yeah, thank you so much for all of you to to join this this small activity in group, and we can go further to the next part. Uh, it will be from my side. It will be quite brief, and then we will have another uh, small group activity. This time, uh, you will be divided by country because of the theme we are um, facing. I would like to share the screen so we can move forward. Of course, if you have any question, uh, please to ask me now or later on. You can tell me when the screen is visible so I can I can go on. Is it? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I just, I, while the, the laptop does its job, I okay, now, will now start. Okay. Now, we're now we're okay. 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 Great. Um, now we will go. Um, I mean, we started just to. Mm, to appreciate the, com the complexity of the tourist sector with a lot of actors uh, having their role and playing a, a key important part. And to move towards the responsible tourism, which is not there yet, um, we're going to talk right now about uh, impossible impacts and effects of tourism. So specifically of mass tourism, uh, which bring to over tourism. So tourism, as uh, as you all know, has a lot to do with impacts, and the way we travel can affect more or less positively or negatively the destination we visit. Uh, respect is a, is a big important part that each uh, traveler can can operate and can travel with this kind of spirit and attitude. On the other side, the planning. Uh, and the management of the destination uh, are also important tools to make the, the to make tourism a, a sustainable tool of income and development. Uh, trying to avoid all the side and negative effects. Um, I would like to ask uh, Anna Lisa to support me now in sharing the video. So I guess I should interrupt. My vision yeah. for one moment, and there is a okay. Okay, I start. Okay, thanks a lot. When I was 17, I fell in love with traveling. 60 countries later, I realized my greatest souvenirs were the stories I brought back. Later on, when I became a cultural anthropologist, I decided to study a nomadic tribe whose stories I'd come to know very well. Backpackers. What is our impact? And what are the trails we leave behind? Present it moves from backpacking to backpackaging. I was tired of following the backpacking trail. It was, to a certain extent, a bit of a herd mentality. There had been a German couple who I had met, and this was in 79, and I told them about this beach, this incredible beach, you know, unspoiled, that nobody knew about, and that I would take them there. But, you know, I asked, whatever you do, don't tell people about this place, because, you know, what will happen is backpackers will end up going there. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you can take a camera. <laughs> Why not? You want a bomb? In the early 1990s, I opened the magazine, and the back page was this photograph of Hot Rin Beach, the beach that I had been at, with thousands and thousands of people. Just, like, unbelievable. It was staggering. <laughs> If somebody had said to me, hey, you know what? The minute you tell somebody, do you realize in 10 years and 15 years, Hot Rin is going to be the site of the full moon party? There's going to be 10,000 people here. Some of them are going to be dying of drug overdoses. There's going to be litter and trash all over this area. Some boon who you stayed with will be marginalized and forced off the land that he lives on. Is this what you want? Cannot make crime again. Maybe other place, huh? In Hatim cannot. It's too late. Too late. It's okay. Thank you, Annalisa. Thanks a lot. Yes, uh, this uh, short video was taken from a documentary uh, called Gringo Trails, which is uh, focusing on the over tourism, all its side effects. I think it's quite uh, impressive to see this example, which is probably, yeah, it's the the worst one we can uh, um, we can see because uh, there are a lot of over tourism situation uh, probably in in the range, but hard to go that bad probably because of the effects on the uh, on the on the environment and the effects of on on the community on the local community. So I guess there is no need to go more uh, in details of the mass and over tourism when it becomes uh, actually a collateral effect itself. So without bringing uh, benefits to the community. So to raise awareness to the traveler, it's also a part of the, of the community, but also of all the small actors in the, in the micro level we have seen before. So it's also their key role to raise awareness and to make the traveler to behave more um, con with consciousness. So one of the simple and funny example we can find uh, in many countries are a list of do's and don'ts, uh, which are trying to, in a very simple and quite funny way, to raise awareness about some specific cultural uh, characteristics of the of the destination or some other uh, important behavior that might not be uh, the, the usual ones for the visitors to act more respectfully uh, thinking about the destination so we can have here we can see here a few examples for example from uh, Myanmar where one of these suggestions is don't point with your foot because in Myanmar, it, it is conceived as a bad, um, as a disrespectful, which might not be somewhere uh, somewhere else. Or uh, maybe in the in these other examples we find for Bali and uh, Thailand, there are other good uh, recommendations, like uh, do show respect to the king and the royal family. Uh, that might seem uh, maybe not not relevant for someone probably coming from uh, a country without the royal family, or without the royals more in general, or for a culture very different than, than the one we're visiting, we might be unaware of some useful tips, like not to drink the tap water, because it's not the same all over the world. So for the next uh, group activity, um, you also have another another file, and 
divided in teams, this time by country, uh, list down a few do's and don'ts for your destination. You can choose the destination you are referring to. It might be the country itself or it might be your own specific area. So you can type in the file. Uh, my recommendation is to try to focus on specific aspects of your destination, which are very important in your culture and which you think they might be relevant recommendation to, for, for tourists to uh, encourage uh, to adopt uh, a good behavior. Uh, now you will have 15 minutes for group. And again, I ask you to, um, to find one spokesperson for each group. So you can then present the, the results. This can also be a, a relevant list when each of the team will, we hope in the future, will visit the other countries uh, within this project. If you have any question uh, before we divide into groups, please. Uh, If not, we can we can start. See, it. okay, okay. I think okay, it's okay. We have a group. Okay, so let's start. Che bravo, uh, Thor, che ha le spalle il longo del... Sì, una figata, lo voglio anch'io. Sì, <ride> lo voglio anch'io. Come l'ha fatto? Poi glielo chiedo, troppo <ride> bello. Lo Era, io sono, non sto partecipando, sto aiutando, per questo non ho presentato, se no te l'avrei fatto io, però infatti non volevo neanche parlare nel gruppo, ma ho visto che nessuno ti parlava, allora ho iniziato a parlare. Okay. Va bene, Annalisa, <ride> grazie. <ride> Perché magari oh. Patrizia deve fare altro e allora sono lì un po' a mediare. Ok. Perché? Perché? Cioè, nessuno parlava e allora ho iniziato a parlare, se no diventava... Bene, bene, Annalisa. Eh, ma poi ho capito perché Anna non, non, non presentavo, avevo, io chiedevo, ho impostato la presentazione su, uh, su schermo, sì. su, insomma dovevo farlo in un altro modo, va bene, ma... Sì, io sono... Tranquilla, tranquilla. Va bene. Ok, vieni che infatti Patrizia è al telefono. No, allora adesso eh, direi di prendere la scheda che dovrebbe... Noi possiamo prenderla direttamente da Google Drive, eh? perché noi italiani ce l'abbiamo... E come faccio a spostarlo? Anche in Drive. Esatto, ma l'unica cosa è che dobbiamo scaricarlo come sempre, perché... Eh, come un file eh, riscrivibile non possiamo utilizzarlo. Allora, quindi se vai in C1 da spostare, è di questo Ascolta, Anna io, ehm, Anna, io stavo andando in, in posta e, e prendevo... Non è già nella stanza di lavoro 1. Ah, oppure così, oppure da lì, prendilo da lì, come dia più comodo. Sì, io lo vedo nella stanza di lavoro 1. Lo sto, eccolo qua, adesso lo condivido, eccolo qua, mi condivido la scheda. Sì, l'ho segnato qua. Aspetta che provo a salvare, vediamo cosa succede. Lo vedete? Come si è messa adesso? Sì, giusto? Ragazzi, lo vedete, giusto? Sì, sì, io lo vedo. Ok, perfetto. Ok, va bene. Allora, dove andiamo ragazzi? Noi siamo in sei, perché se, chi è che c'è anche con noi? Norberto, manca, no, non vedo ancora no, Norberto. Non no, no, sei tu, no, è la presentazione, infatti, stavo guardando. Provo a vedere, eh, provo a vedere cosa è successo. Sì. Allora, aspetta. Eh. Allora? Ma all'interno del, all dell'Italia? Sì, eh? Pen sì, pensavo di sì. Vai, vai. Mm -hmm. Qualche zona che conosciamo dove vorremmo andare? Che dite? Eh? Non so. No. Dai, Loredana. Eh, oh, brava. Sì. Proponi tu un posto, dai. Allora, dai, Loredana. Eh, 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 eh. Cosa vogliamo fare? 
Ma, eh, abbiamo parlato, Chilena ha parlato di montagna, quindi abbiamo le Dolomiti, allora, abbiamo sì. le Dolomiti. Eh. Vai! Quindi, eh. Ok. Eh. Dolomiti, le, le conoscono tutti. Eh, eh sì. Non okay. dire Poi, eh, vabbè, che cosa non si può fare? Ma ah, iniziamo oh, subito con le cose negative. <ride> Ecco. No, lasciare, lasciare immondizie esatto, cioè, esatto, esatto. Eccetera. E io, io, ti, io, allora, io Poi, se raccogliere i fiori, eh, infatti, eh, quello stavo pensando. Don't pick flowers, sì, flowers. non danneggiare l'ambiente. La ecco, allora vado così: non danneggiare l'ambiente naturale. Così sì, ma è quella, quella dei fiori o delle è proprio perché è un divieto imposto ecco, dalla, yes. dalla legge. Cioè, sì, eh, io metterei questa parentesi: sì. io metterei non danneggiare eh, l'ambiente, vietato per legge, sì, ad esempio. Sì, sì. Sì. Um, okay. si impegna a rispettare l'ambiente ma c'è anche un obbligo giuridico di non eh... no ma perché io sono qua in stanza di lavoro 1 Ampior, Magdalena, Norberto Trudir eh, Trudir forse Esatto. Non solo perché comunque è difficile gestire una rete di smaltimento dei rifiuti in montagna. Sì, certo. Quindi Poi, è una mancanza di rispetto. Sì, ma soprattutto anche per non caricare i rifugi. Sì. Sì. Io, io sono una no, no, perché io amo la montagna, vado in montagna, sono una ex accompagnatore di montagna. Allora voi siete nella stanza centrale. Assolutamente. Quindi no, no, è anche una questione per i rifiuti. Sì. E poi eh, c'è cioè, il telefono, ora Fabrizio al telefono, sì, la vita a Spartano che ti porti dietro l'indispensabile okay. e non il superfluo, ecco, quindi già andare con una predisposizione di spirito che di quel che non hai fai senza. Eh. Però secondo me dobbiamo anche mettere, allora se mettiamo Dolomiti eh, a 360 gradi, quindi Dolomiti anche i paesini, quindi cioè, non è detto che sia solo l'escursione in montagna. Secondo me focalizziamoci anche su l'ambiente la, la montagna a 360 gradi, secondo me, che non è solo la passeggiata in montagna. Certo, assolutamente. Per esempio, ehm, ecco, sì, nei paesini, infatti, Annalisa, il rispetto appunto delle, tra, anche proprio delle tradizioni locali, dove per esatto. tradizioni... Poi lo scrivo, per esempio, ecco l'urlare che non va bene mai, ma in particolare in, in questi ambienti. Insomma, non si riesco a silenziarlo io. Aspetta, io lo metto pure nella stanza di lavoro numero 3. però se lui non accetta, esatto, prova a far così. Non si sono silenziate. Perfetto, sì, sì, sì. No, l'altra cosa che mi veniva da dire è l'acquisto, sostenere la produzione locale. Quindi a questa... Attivate il microfono, scusa. No, no, eh, no, ma perché c'è un problema? Perché abbiamo, <ride> abbiamo eh, un, un turco che è finito con... Esatto, eh, me l'ha detto Fabrizio. anche Norberto, Fabrizio. No. Eh, il problema è che io in realtà ce l'ho segnato alla stanza di lavoro numero 3, ma il problema è che se lui non accetta, eh, è questo il problema. E poi abbiamo... Eh, Norberto, ah, c'è anche Norberto che mi ha chiamato e ha detto che lui è nella stanza di centrale. Con... Sì, perché tecnicamente noi eravamo comunque divisi per stanze, infatti Giulia è nella numero quindi dire, 3. Ah. Però vabbè, se vogliamo lasciarli da soli, io adesso lui lo posso rimettere da noi. Questo è giusto, eh? 
che Norberto fosse lì giusto, però io lo posso mettere anche da noi, tanto è uguale. Come volete, un... no, no, lui mi, fa... mi segnalava questo. Sì, ma perché era lui da mediatore. Noi eravamo ah. divisi apposta così, eh. eh local, prodotti locali, sì. Poi... Mm. Questo va bene sempre, per carità. Sì. Cioè... Sì. E deve essere educati non anche so. secondo me partecipare alla quotidianità no? quindi se ci sono degli eventi se ci sono delle questo potrebbe essere abbastanza t- tipico del poi mm. nelle dolomini assolutamente lo fanno proprio come mood esatto. <ride> organizzare cose di questo tipo tipo uh, local 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 attra- no ok um, local attractions ma non è attractions jo- join local um, um, not exhibitions not attractions join local um, okay, scusami ti ho messo giù Bekir non è assegnato credo l'ha messo con i turchi invece No, no Bekir, io ascolta, Bekir lo ha segnato, adesso è anche verde. Il problema è che se lui non accetta, ah, okay, no, io ho fatto eh. vedere la fermata, doveva cliccare dove, ma dice che non ce l'ha. Vabbè, pace, allora basta. È lui. Adesso io lo vedo, io, io adesso lo vedo assegnato, lo vedo assegnato ai, ai turchi eh, e lo no. vedo pure verde, per cui in teoria no, c'è. Allora no, forse è entrato, okay. Era giusto che tu fossi nell'altra stanza, perché di quello che mediamo l'altra stanza. Sì, sì, no, ma il problema sì. è. Allora, io avevo capito che c'era il mediatore, ma non avevo capito anche in questa seconda fase, anche perché lì parlano islandese, quindi io cosa gli medio, cioè nel senso... No, però è una volontà, ma secondo me... No, è che se avevano bisogno ti facevano delle domande, che le fa... se ah. erano di essere in inglese, non in islandese. Ok, come volete, io posso... No, anche no, 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 resta qua, resta qua, no, dai. No, tanto gli islandesi sono... Le radici tue islandesi un'altra volta è la versione professional che riesce a mettere nelle stanze no è la versione no, è la versione lucrative cioè noi scuole abbiamo alcune alcune features e loro ne hanno altre sì. possiamo registrare loro no loro hanno le stanze noi no ma eh. abbiamo visto una cosa ho visto io una cosa prima dopo faccio una prova dobbiamo fare una prova forse riusciamo anche a registrare però dire, facciamo una prova domani perché poi stasera andiamo okay. a No, prima di fare qualcosa che salta, eh, lasciamolo così. <ride> sì, sì, no, ma è tutto a posto adesso, eh. Sono tutti quanti nelle loro stanze, si è anche ripreso... Vabbè, manca solo Ambion, ma perché non sta rispondendo. Ah. Ecco eh, i turchi, ma perché non sta rispondendo. Bjorn prima non ha detto una parola nella stanza, eh. Mm. Eh, ma non tutti parlano di fatti. No, no, ma c'era proprio Bollino e basta, non c'era proprio. Mm. Mm-hmm. Ok, tutto while writing help. Aspetta, devo uh, ingrandire, se no, io sono ceccato. Ecco, io vi confermo che noi siamo in diretta con uh, siamo in diretta YouTube con i ragazzi. Ah, perfetto. Va bene. Sì, questo gruppo sì. sì. E quindi okay. capiscono cosa, cosa diciamo. Va bene, eh, che altro dobbiamo aggiungere? <ride> Um, don't <coughs> come in Italia don't shout <ride> siamo sulle Dolomiti non vorrei dire no, professore no, we are no, in the mountains no, no. we are in the mountains <ride> no, no. don't shout è lo sport nazionale okay, no, 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 no. 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 <ride> ah. eh. don't mm. Non mi viene in mente altro, don't damage, don't shout. Ah sì, um, sì è analogo al don't be aggressive. Io non so voi, ma um, soprattutto um, mi accorgo sì, sui sentieri di montagna e anche appunto un po' facendo queste um, passeggiate un po' più diciamo ardimentose in montagna. 
se c'è il tipo sportivo e eh, il tipo sportivo non accetta che davanti a lui ci sia qualcuno eh, che possa rallentare la sua ascesa e questa cosa sta diventando sempre più frequente è una cosa allucinante eh, sì, è vero. È veramente incredibile questa cosa qui eh, una sorta di insofferenza per chi non è all'altezza o comunque chi non è tanto bravo quanto eh, la vedo come proprio un modo di una sorta di aggressività e quindi sì, ecco ah sì, e tu di che tipo sei? e tu ecco, a quale ecco, tipo ecco, uno, ecco uno che vomita cioè tra un certo ah, comunque Filena Filena ci sono persone che poi sono quelli che fanno gli accompagnatori di me, che per me andare al mio passo, andare un passo più lento, per me è uguale. Nel senso, io non mi affatico, non ho, il mio obiettivo è un altro, e poi fisicamente non mi affatico. E questa è una, tra virgolette, capacità no, che hai in principio. Ci sono persone, penso ad esempio anche a Vincenzo, che magari, se non basso al suo passo, fa il triplo della fatica. L'attenzione, eh, scusa Vincenzo, la per difesa. La te- la te- la te- eh, vai, vai di notte, perdonami Annalisa, vai di notte, <ride> quando non trovi più, cioè la tensione, visto che la montagna è di tutti, la tensione è non gomitare e non ho visto che non potevo fare il moderatore quindi tantissimo lo faccio qui il don't ci sta don't be aggressive è eh, esatto don't be aggressive <ride> <ride> don't, say, um, don't leave the train or stay on the train stai sì. sul sentiero stay on the path sì, sì. certo sì, sì. tra i due don't, don't leave the path don't leave the train che è un po' quello del non rovinare l'ambiente, diciamo, però effettivamente è un po' più specifico. Sì. Sì. Un'altra cosa, ma sai, quello del, del stai sul sentiero, io volevo anche vestiti in modo adeguato, perché il più delle volte... Okay. Anche, sì. Perché il più delle volte cosa succede? Che le, i poveri soccorritori di montagna, <ride> il soccorso alpino, soccorrono delle persone che, uno, non hanno uh, seguito il sentiero, due, che non avevano un'attrezzatura adeguata. Questo. Stiamo finendo, eh? Sì, sì. Hello again. Okay, I guess we're all back. So, uh, if there is anyone willing to start? Otherwise, start from I... Iceland. Okay, from Iceland. Thank you so much. Uh, so, we discussed this uh, because we don't have a lot of like uh, political or cultural or like uh, tra- traditional gestures or do's and don'ts regarding that. So these are very practical advices we are bringing you. So I will share my screen. Yes. Uh, a window and it's this one. Okay, so the, the do's, the first one, should I just read them out? And you can maybe ask if there's any questions and I, I will elaborate more on that. So. Pay attention to the weather. To pay attention to the weather forecast uh, in Iceland because the weather here is ever changing. Like every five minutes, it could rain one minute and it could snow the next. I don't know those of you who have been to Iceland know what I'm talking about. So that's very. Uh, it's very important when you are traveling around the country to pay attention to the forecast before uh, walking around in the wilderness. Three cold water from the tap because that is perfectly safe in Iceland. Uh, leave your travel itineraries with safe travel, uh, which is an app you, you put on your phone. And before 
go, go before you go uh, on a hike, you should put in your. Is it an app? Uh, yes, it's an app. So if you if okay. you say in the app that you will be returning at this time on this day, and you haven't returned on that time, okay. the, the people or, or the uh, the the search team will try to contact you. If they can't, they will search for you on a on foot or right. feet or or whatever is needed. Thank uh, you. Be aware of the sheep on the highway. Uh, could be dangerous to drive fast on them, especially for them, of course, but it also could be dangerous for you. <laughs> uh, use guide services before embarking on a uh, onto a glacier. Because some people think that uh, we have glaciers here, so you should, you should just try to walk on top of them. But they are quite dangerous sometimes, especially in hazardous weather. Uh, and you you can especially uh, hike up to an active erupting volcano. Uh, because now there is an active erupting volcano. I don't know if you've been following the news. Yeah. And it, it is completely safe especially now because they have uh, they have routed the easiest and the most secure way up to the eruption. So it is uh, definitely allowed. So don't and it's very stop. specific. <laughs> it's yeah, that's yeah, it's very current <laughs> and specific. <laughs> because it's yeah. not like we have we don't have active uh, erupting volcanoes every other week, but it's happening right now, so please feel free to walk up to it. Uh, okay. So don't. Very important off-road driving. Uh, it's very it's prohibited. Camping on farmers' property. Some people think that because Iceland is uh, so, uh, but there's so much nature. But sometimes you're on a private property. Sometimes you're actually next to some farmer's home. So don't camp there unless you have uh, you have talked to the farmer. Drive on highland roads on Toyota Yaris. This is also very specific, but this is uh, more uh, of uh, like we're talking about small cars. Do not try to uh, go on highland roads or glacier roads on a small car. Take selfies on a cliff. Of course, if you're very, uh, if you take, if you, if you, uh, you, you go, yeah. you're safe, but this could be dangerous. Stop on highways to take pictures. This could lead up to a dangerous, uh, like uh, other cars coming past you. It's difficult. It's uh, very dangerous to stop on the middle of the road or even uh, not on the road. It, should, it could uh, take the focus of the other drivers from the other driver. And last yeah. but not least, eat pizza with pineapple. This is something that actually our president, he was asked to... Uh, he was asked about this matter, which was very much in the discussion here a few years ago. And people were uh, divided into two groups. And someone just asked the president, what do you think? And he said, no, I don't like pineapple on pizza. So we don't. <laughs> Thank you. That's such an insightful <laughs> advice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. They're very, very interesting and specific. Uh, Recommendation. Thank you. So, who's next? Italy or Turkey? Okay. Okay. Would you like to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I will try to share the screen now. Sorry. It was easier with Zoom, you know. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the document? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Okay, sorry, we were just in a hurry to to discuss it and it took a lot of time to, you know, write and uh, discuss. So this is what we have for to do. So we say that you can take your food and eat while walking in um, some of the countries. It's, it's not forbidden, but people don't like it. You can go alone at night and uh, nobody says anything to you, like what are you doing here and there. And uh, the third one is kind of funny, but this is what I learned when I came to Adana. You can start a fight, but the responsibility is yours. <laughs> you can go out with short sleeves, even if it is winter time, because we don't have any snow. 
And uh, the other one, you can eat as much as you want and we will not judge you because we like people <laughs> who really like to eat. <laughs> And the last one, you can enter a house and ask for water or food because we are hospitable. No one will tell you that they don't have food or water. And um, this is the old tradition that we would like to um, keep on doing. But nowadays, it's really difficult because people don't trust each other. And we are a big city with more than 2 million people. And um, about the dons, you can enter the mosques with your shoes and uh, especially women have to cover their heads. It's uh, the most common rule in many Muslim countries. And the other one, you can't swear or talk loudly, especially swearing is uh, forbidden. Like, be ready for a fight if they hear you swearing. And the other one is it when you start talking too loudly, people uh, misunderstand it and uh, they think that you are ready to fight as well. And the other one, you can't stare at people too directly. This is also another kind of discussion that we're having, especially you're not in the same gender. It's, it's probably no option. And uh, don't walk outside without a hat or umbrella in summertime because we really have hot weather, like around 40 degrees in summertime, and it starts really early, like in May, you're sweating. And the other one, you can't say that the food is too much. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you say that it's too much I can't eat it we don't accept it okay <laughs> and uh, the last one is which I am most shocked to hear that when I came to other you can't order rice with kebab in the many Turkish restaurants you can see that they are serving rice with kebab but this is not optional okay because we have some cases like the customer has uh, beaten uh, the the guy who served the kebab because they also brought some rice with the kebab. <laughs> <laughs> so well, what I know from this list is Turkey is a is a country, is a place of food, a lot of food and possible fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, possible fights. Adana, especially Adana, yeah. this is what Adana. I uh, Definitely. Learned. <laughs> Yeah, this is what we have. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. We we all learn something new. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fatma and the group from Turkey. And the last but not least, Italy. I can share someone else will comment on it. Okay, I start sharing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's see. <laughs> I guess you have this role today. <laughs> can you see my screen? Did I share my screen? Yes. Okay, yep. thank you. Okay, so we again we in Italy but, and again in the in the mountains in the mountains in uh, Dolomites, so, so in the north of Italy. Um, and uh, when you are in the mountains, uh, and uh, well, yes, you are supposed you are asked to take your rubbish with you and not and uh, not to leave it uh, there where you uh, you know where you are eating but uh, in, uh, you you are re required uh, it's a good idea to put it into your rucksack and uh, bring it back with you okay and then it's essential to respect the local habits uh, in particular if you think that uh, uh, villages uh, small villages are very popular and common in uh, some areas in the mountains it's also a good idea buying local products and then being polite, not only in the mountains, I must say, but uh, everywhere and always. And uh, also, if you have, um, you know, the, the occasion, why not joining local initiatives like, uh, like exhibitions or festivals, everything that uh, allows you to stay in touch with their culture, to come in touch and uh, to come into contact with their culture. And then uh, help other people when they are in need. Well, yes, this is in particular what happens. Uh, it's a, a very um, uh, sensible thing to do when uh, you are walking along paths or when you are hiking. If you see some people in trouble, uh, well, it's uh, something belonging to traditions in the mountains, uh, helping each other, helping people in need. On the contrary, what uh, yes what no don't damage the environment uh, well sometimes uh, 
uh, even you know picking up uh, uh, flowers that is uh, forbidden by laws so um, of course respect regulations or even uh, uh, lit fires in the booth so don't damage the environment uh, don't shout, yes, someone, Norberto, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> about no, yeah, I, actually, I entered the room and I just saw don't shout. Uh, says, In Italy, don't shout. It's a, um, a Shouting is national sport here. We, no, we come on. Shout, shout. <laughs> but then they say, no, look, we, we're talking about Dolomites. Ah, okay, then maybe. So that's yeah. specific part of Italy. <laughs> the rest, when you, will, <laughs> when you will be here in Italy. Don't worry, shouting is just part of life here. <laughs> yeah, but not in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you can know my Then the south and you go, the, the more they shout, and we yeah. shout. <laughs> and then also, don't be aggressive again. Um, yes, not, your behavior, be respectful. Mm, don't be aggressive, be respectful. Um, and um, yes, even when uh, people uh, don't have, of course, don't share not only your opinions, of course, but uh, I, I'm thinking of uh, people, again, on the paths, uh, people may have, uh, may be slower than you. Yes, and so why not respecting uh, their slower pace? Hmm? And then don't leave the path, so follow the, um, the, the, the path and uh, don't be a danger for you, but also for uh, other people. If, because if you leave the path, of course, you can be dangerous uh, for everybody around you. And uh, this is what we thought, mm -hmm. thinking of destination in the mountains mm -hmm, in Italy. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Filene, and thank you, the all Italian team members. Thank you, thank you, everybody. I, I can learn everybody something <laughs> right now. And now I would like to leave it to Fabrizio to, to follow up. Is Fabrizio with okay. us? Yes, here I am. Yes, he is. Okay. Okay, thank you. Julia, thank you very much for your presentation, exercises and so on. Uh, so I think that uh, we are not too tired. So uh, I think uh, if you uh, agree, we can go straight away uh, to the third part uh, of our uh, first, uh, first meeting. So uh, I have a, a very small presentation. Huh? Uh, regarding uh, responsible tourism uh, and uh, some principles. Uh, you know that uh, we will uh, speak uh, uh, more uh, next, uh, next time in, uh, in, um, in the second meeting uh, regarding uh, objectives, principles and so on on, the, um, on responsible tourism. But uh, uh, today we want to give you a very uh, short overview. Uh, regarding uh, the birth of uh, responsible tourism and uh, and some principles. So I have uh, uh, just, I think, uh, seven or eight slides uh, and uh, two uh, short uh, videos to present. At the end of my presentation, I will give the floor to, to Julia uh, to explain the homework that you have uh, to do for next, uh, for next meeting. So let's start. Uh, uh, a brief uh, history of responsible tourism. Tourism uh, in the 60s became more and more a mass phenomenon and people felt it as an inexhaustible source of development. If we have in mind, uh, uh, if we think, uh, for example, to the poorest countries uh, in the world, we can understand that tourism can be an important lever. What does it mean? More people, more tourists, uh, uh, that means more money. And, uh, that's enough. So that means that the consequences and the impact that tourism can generate were not taken into consideration. Uh, it was not a problem. Uh, but over the years, uh, this awareness uh, became greater and greater. So uh, debates, reflection, conferences, uh, and so on started. Either beginning 
uh, mass tourism and the effect of this kind uh, of tourism. Next slide. So, uh, more and more people and institutions understood that tourism can create uh, negative consequences on the environment and on population. Tourism can do good things, we know, uh, of course, but it can also cause great damage. And this is the point. So, in the 90s, uh, a, very, uh, a very strong sensibility uh, was born um, in a lot of country. Uh, in Italy, for example, in 1998, uh, ITR, you know, uh, you remember ITR, the Italian Association for Responsible Tourism, was born. And today is uh, the most important association that we have in Italy. That means that we have more or less 100 uh, members in ITR. So um, for us, it's really big. Uh, and the ITR was also one of the main actors for the birth of the creation of Earth, because I don't know if you if you know, but uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, organization is based in um, in Belgium, in Brussels, and it's the European Network for Responsible Tourism. That means that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, members coming from a lot of uh, European countries. Not only for uh, from uh, uh, not only from Italy. Uh. So what uh, what started uh, a new sensitivity? All the actors of responsible touring that mean tourist organizer and local host community must be aware of being involved in a relationship that must not be focused on the needs of the one or the other but they are in a complex dynamism in which everyone must respect and preserve the balance for a healthy, sustainable and profitable survival of the other protagonist of the tourist experience. We are all involved uh, as, uh, as actors of, uh, of uh, tourism in this uh, complex dynamism. So we have to keep in mind a lot of uh, things when we talk about tourism and when we uh, want to work in this sector. Uh, next one, please. The evolution. The evolution. Over the years, various practices in tourism have arisen. Uh, for example, conscious tourism, ecotourism, cultural tourism, community tourism, sustainable tourism, fire trade tourism. If you want to create package of these different dimensions of tourism are respected as much as possible. Or at least that one does not conflict with the others. Tourism is important for economy, but you have to preserve the local host, the environment and so on. So you, uh, we don't have to choose one of them. We have to keep in mind that we have a lot of them and uh, we uh, have to respect as much as possible this uh, different aspect of, uh, mm, of the tourism. Now uh, I will uh, share this, uh, this video. It's a very short uh, interview. If it starts. Um, you're not sharing the audio, Fabrizio. To share, but just one. Uh... Okay. Sorry to speak English. Scheda, presenta una scheda di clicchi audio, una scheda di 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 Chrome. It's my audio, okay. Annalisa, sorry. Nice. I don't remember that my audio is closed. Okay, wait. Okay. I love to travel, that's my great passion. 
and responsible travel for me is the most enjoyable way I found to travel because it brings me closer to local people and local cultures, but it also does so in a more respectful way. More is some of the negative impacts that tourism can often have. It's not perfect because all tourism, no matter what type, has positive and negative impacts. What responsible travel and tourism does is maximise the benefits of tourism and reduces some of the negatives. Essentially, there's three types of benefits and problems that tourism can create. The first one is economics. And what we're trying to do is increase the spread of benefits of tourism into local communities. So more of the cost of your holiday stays in local people's hands. The second area is the environmental area. And of course, what we're trying to do is reduce water use, energy wastage. We're trying to support local conservation projects. We're trying to avoid stuff like pumping sewage out into beautiful bays. The last area is the cultural impacts of tourism. And I think we've all seen places which have been swamped by tourism and their culture has been damaged and how tourism can run roughshod over local cultures and local peoples. Tourism is absolutely vital to the economies of many countries around the world. World Tourism Organization says that one in 12 people are directly or indirectly employed in tourism. And the countries that are doing best, places all we want to go, are in fact developing countries. And for them, tourism is one of their most important industries. Not only that, but many of the conservation projects around the world, both natural and cultural heritage, are funded through income from us, from tourists and the tourism um, pound or the tourism dollar. So tourism is very important for livelihoods, for communities, for jobs and for conservation of cultural and natural heritage around the world. Responsible tourism, is, for me, is a more enjoyable way to travel, essentially because I travel to discover things about places and to have experiences. And when I go to Africa, rather than zooming around in a minibus with a guide from England, what I prefer to do is go walking with the Maasai because that gives me an insight into their lives. They teach me tracking. They're the best trackers in the world. And I know they go home having earned a little bit of money from tourism. Or when I stay in the UK, I'd rather go and stay on a beautiful organic farmhouse um, and go out and spend time with them, learning a little bit about how they produce food as well as kicking back and relaxing because... That, for me, is just learning about places and people. And that's what I love about travel and tourism. is the heart of it for me. And responsible tourism, because it's built around this idea of local, local experiences, local produce, local guides, uh, local experiences, distinctive places, learning about what makes places different and magical. That's why it's such a wonderful way to travel. The types of holidays I suggest that people think very carefully before they take are the ones in which, in a stampede for profits, local people environments are completely run over and, um, and, and destroyed. And it's that single-minded pursuit of the tourism dollar at any expense, which I think causes the biggest problem for local people and for destinations. And in some cases, the holidays are designed in such a way that most of the money doesn't end up in the tourism destination it leaks out and it comes back home with the tour company, the travel agent or the airline. And those holidays do very little for local people except for damage their cultures and environments. Those are the holidays I think that more of us should be avoiding. My tips for tourists in terms of traveling responsibly are this. Uh, first of all, if you're traveling with an organized tour company, make sure that company has a policy for responsible tourism. If you book it via us, you can guarantee that that's the case. And secondly, if you're traveling either with one of those companies or independently, is to think local. Think small scale, think local. Stay in locally owned accommodation, eat in local restaurants, get off that beaten path and discover what is magical about those places and travel with respect. Because travelling with respect earns you respect. Read up on local customs and cultures. You'll be more informed. Avoid any potential problems that you might create for local people. So travel with respect earns you respect. Think local about everything you do. You'll have a wonderful time and more enjoyable holiday. But you'll also not fall foul of any problems with local cultures or people.
Okay, uh, so as you have seen, uh, in the tourist sector, we have a lot of uh, of elements, a lot of things to to keep in mind. We can uh, say that uh, uh, it's um, a complex sector, but uh, uh, in my opinion, a really wonderful sector. Uh, so, what uh, what kind of elements are important when we talk about uh, responsible tourism? So, uh, travel is one of the most beautiful experiences for a person. When a journey can give us emotions and memories, then the experience, experience is combined with something more, which remains all the time. And, you know, this is very important for us. So, responsible tourism unites social, sustainable and supportive souls to carry out a constant project of fair development of local communities, based on some fundamental principle. Which kind? Next uh, slide, please. Here are some of them. Ethics, sustainability, environment, cultural, and so on. Respect for places, for places, for nature, and for people, of course. And the responsibility of those who travel, are host or make travel. So we can say that uh, all the different actors with different needs have a responsibility in this sector. Also when we are just uh, a, a tourist. Tourism is a question of dynamism of different, of different dimensions. And in the next uh, um, step, in the next meeting, we will uh, we will speak uh, concretely about that. A lot of elements of different elements of different en uh, interest and how to combine this uh, this element together. Uh, the situation the situation in Italy. Uh, you know we have uh, different uh, ideas uh, all around the world uh, regarding responsible tourism, uh, some differences and so on. And so, what is important for us in Italy? at this moment, uh, when we talk about responsible tourism. So for us, it is uh, uh, important uh, uh, the development of, uh, of uh, good practices of uh, sustainable mobility. For us uh, now, it's, it, it's really important. The respect for nature and people, the fair condition and treatment for workers in the field of tourism. This is another uh, um, key point when we talk about tourism. The use of organic products of a territory, the energy saving, and the consumption of energy produced from renewable sources. Uh, we um, we are. Uh, I'm talking about Italy. We are a complex uh, country uh, with a lot of differences. Uh, so uh, we made a, a sort of uh, of synthesis in this uh, slide. Uh, just to to present to you some key points when we will have the last meeting i i think uh, when we uh, we will present some experiences we will put uh, our attention on these points because for us at this moment uh, in this time are uh, relevant and are very very important uh, I want to finish with the last uh, video. Uh, this is a video coming from Thailand. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a travel experience. It's a part of our travel uh, experience. You can uh, see a village, uh, local people, and, uh, and the traveler speaking about this experience. Okay. คือเรื่องการเอารุรักเราอนุรักษ์มาตั้งแต่รุ่นรุ่นบรรพบุรุษเพราะว่ามันเป็นเหมือนกับซูเปอร์มาร์เก็ตของชาวบ้านพวกกุ้งหอยปูปลาคือสามารถเจอในป่าชายเลนได้ทั้งหมดเลย
าชีเลเสียบเสมือนตะเล็กลงมาปัดน้ําเสียนี่คือความสำคัญเสียบเสมือนลักษณะของตัวสะพานตัวเขาว่าเชื่อมโยงระบบนี้เป็นสําคัญคือการอนุรักษ์ไม่ใช่ว่าไม่ให้ใช้ประโยชน์เลยแต่คือให้ใช้ยังไงให้ยั่งยืนเพื่อจะได้ใช้ถึงรุ่นลูกรุ่นหลานต่อไปในอนาคตเนื่องจากป่าเชลนชุมชนที่อยู่โดยรอบก็จะเกิดอาชีพหลากหลายมากแต่ทำได้ว่าจะเป็นคนขับเรือแล้วคนตกปูคืออาชีพมันมีอยากหลายมากถ้าเราเข้าใจทรัพยากรแล้วเราก็จัดการได้ว่าถ้ามีป่าที่สมบูรณ์ก็จะมีนักท่องเที่ยวที่มาชมมาเที่ยวตามวิถีธรรมชาติมากขึ้น you really feel how the people live and you get to know the people who live in this country and who makes this country special แล้วก็บรรยากาศของน้ําทะเลที่ข้างนอกมันเขียวใสแล้วก็หมู่เกาะที่ยังเป็นธรรมชาติอยู่คือเมื่อได้ขับเรือไปไปเจอก็อยากอยากแชร์ประสบการณ์จากที่เราได้ไปเจอแล้วสวยเวลามีแขกมาพักที่โฮมสเตย์สนุกแล้วก็ทำให้บ้านคึกคืนขึ้นเหมือนกับมีเพื่อนมีญาติมาเยี่ยมเราจะไม่คิดว่าเป็นนักท่องเที่ยวมาคือทุกคนในครอบครัวต้อนรับด้วยใจจริงๆครับมุสลิม 99% ไทยพุทธ 1% เราก็สามารถอยู่ร่วมกันได้โดยมีความสุขไม่มีปัญหาขัดแย้งเรื่องศาสนาเพราะว่าศาสนาเป็นเรื่องการนับถือทางจิตใจเพราะฉะนั้นเรื่องศาสนาจะไม่มีปัญหากันเราสามารถอยู่รวมกันอย่างมีความสุขแล้วประเทศไทยก็สามารถตอบสนองได้ไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องของความเป็นธรรมชาติลงของมิตรภาพที่คนไทยให้ไปรวมถึงความปลอดภัยที่ประเทศไทยกำลังพัฒนาดูแลนักเที่ยวคนที่มาเที่ยวอยากได้ไปเจอไปเห็นเหมือนกับเรากับที่เราเห็นคืออยากจะให้สัมผัสธรรมชาติที่ยังดิบดิบอยู่ไม่ได้มีการปรุงแต่งอะไรมากมายจะได้สัมผัสธรรมชาติจริงๆครับโอเคยูแคนคลูสโอเคเออโซวิสิสเวนด์ของไม่ very 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 short uh, um, introduction is not a presentation of course is an introduction uh, in the field of uh, responsible tourism uh, we will uh, deep in these topics uh, next uh, In the next uh, meeting, uh, I will um, remember that we will uh, host uh, some uh, teachers coming from the school of ITR because uh, in uh, in in this area we have uh, a specific uh, school for uh, responsible tourism. Uh, we will uh, have uh, two teachers, and we will uh, spend uh, all the time of the next. Uh, Meeting uh, regarding uh, principal uh, objectives uh, of uh, of um, responsible tourism, and at the end we will uh, talk about the professions and the future. Uh, what can do the the students uh, do in this uh, in this uh, in the field of uh, social tourism uh, for their future? Uh, now uh, I will give. Uh, Uh, I will pass to uh, Julia because uh, we have uh, a homework for you, of course, uh, at the end. Uh, so you have to to do something at home. Um, 
don't worry, it's easy. Uh, nothing too complex. So <laughs> I think you are uh, absolutely able uh, to do that. And uh, uh, I will uh, say, but uh, Julia will say it uh, uh, after that, um, we ask you to send us your homework uh, uh, in, a, in a few days. Uh, because we need to 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 read your uh, your text uh, to think something about and uh, to use your text to uh, prepare the next meeting so uh, for now thank you very much Julia if you want to explain uh, the homework thank you thank you Fabrizio um, yes it's a very simple one so don't don't be scared um, we would like Give your uh, input and your ideas regarding the definition of, of responsible tourism. Uh, please try not to take inspiration from online resources. There are a lot. What we would like to do with this kind of assignment is to actually to hear your voices and your ideas on the aspects that most uh, are, are mostly important to define when talking about responsible uh, tourism. This definition should be no longer than four or five lines, so a very short one. And as Fabrizio said, we would like to receive your responses no later than Sunday, 28th of March. Uh, uploading the file in the shared folder on Google Drive. If you do the responsible person of your team uh, to do it. And technically speaking, uh, we ask you to name the file with your name and the name of your institution so we know who is the author. And these responses will be read by the by us and by the speaker of next of next meeting. So this is a, a starting point for, for next meeting, and that's why is is important. And there are no, of course, again, right or wrong definition, right or wrong answers. Uh, we would like to really hear what what are your thoughts after today today's discussion. And if now, if you have any on this assignment. Or, uh, all subjects we cover. This is the time, and feel free. And Roberto, just a question. I think that uh, we can share uh, this presentation in the next day in a uh, in the in the Google Drive. Is it? Yes, we are recording it on YouTube. Um, we were thinking of um, not leaving it public, but you may receive a link where you can. Yes, we we can watch. It. So I can distribute the link to the mailing list of all of us. And I was thinking then to have a sort of summary of the whole meeting. So maybe cutting the less important parts and just putting together all the highlights of, uh, of this meeting in one single video that then will be left open to the public. So it depends then what you want me to share with you. But for this summary, you need to wait. Uh, some seven to ten days, <laughs> okay, at least. <laughs> and uh, regarding our presentations, I think that we can. Uh... Ah, sorry, sorry, I missed yeah. It. Yeah, the, yeah, yes, yes, of course. You, all the slides that have been uh, presented here will be okay. shared. We already have a, a shared folder that we will move that folder into the shared one. Yes, sorry. Okay. Uh... Okay, may, may I ask, uh, probably Norberto is more, is more technological uh, here. Uh, the, 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 the files with the exercise we did, if we can also collect them in the folder of this first meeting. Yeah, no as problem. As an out. Uh, yes. So we will, uh, okay, we will add it's allowed. Yeah. Okay, so we will add all the participants because at the moment the shared folder is not for all those in attendance here, but the exercises and everything will be shared also with you. Tonight or tomorrow the latest, you will receive an email with the uh, with the shared folder. If if you want, just let us know, okay? Thanks. Okay. And yeah, let me let me write my email address in case 
for those who don't have it yet. Okay, so great. I think we we made it on time. Yes, perfect in time. <laughs> Quite incredible, but perfect in time. Uh, so okay. I, I was a fine keeper, but I did nothing because it was <laughs> just perfect. <laughs> <place>. So excellent. <laughs> Uh, so, Norberto, if you want to conclude this uh, first meeting. Yeah. yeah, I thank all of you. May, Norberto, sorry, may I ask a question? Yeah? Uh, Thor, the question is for you. Are you there behind your camera? Like, the, you know, the question I usually ask my students. I, is there anybody behind that camera? <laughs> no, Thor, I'm not joking. I, I was so curious about your background. You were able to have the logo be at um, behind you how did you do that uh, no. there are oh, oh, for me uh, Thur, no, or Thor, Thor, no. Thor, Thor, yeah. not yeah. Thura, um, but Thor. You, you you should play with the look menu. at Loredana look at Loredana look at Loredana okay <laughs> great great, great. great. okay <laughs> no. how did you do that yes. Loredana how did you do that come sei riuscita? Vabbè, poi ce lo spieghi. Yeah, you can ask any student and then he will tell you. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should have a technical meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of you for being in attendance. Uh, special thanks to Betania and uh, to Ice for uh, the good preparation uh, they, they went through. Maybe you have an idea, but there have been a lot of meetings and, <laughs> and things going on in these days, but the results are, is, are really excellent. Even though we, we're online, we're on meet, not, not not physically in Italy <laughs> to enjoy the to enjoy the association, but it still was a great start for this formation. So looking forward to meeting all of you next week. Um, I think there are some spots available uh, uh, for some of, of you partners. Uh, so let us know if you can fill them in for the next time, or uh, uh, vice versa. If this is the number, we need to tell the Erasmus agency that some are missing for this uh, formation and then we will in the, in the future next year see if someone else um, uh, can be added. Actually, uh, we, we need to add them for the future if they're not uh, participating to this formation. Okay, so thanks a lot. Maybe a picture is always a must after at the end. It would be better to take it at the beginning. We, we're more fresh, but <laughs> anyway, tired as we are, we may just uh, try to switch cameras on if possible and smile in front of the camera for the final picture. And all right, uh, so let's, let's, uh, Vincenzo, I know you're there. <laughs> Even with your kids, you, you can just smile. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. So what, look at the camera and smile at my three, one, two, and three. <laughs> okay, um, hold on a second. Let me save this one. And, uh, and yeah, here it is. And next one, we we can take it while smiling and uh, and waving. Okay, again, one, two, three. Hey, bye. <laughs> no, sorry, I, I pressed the button. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Try again. Okay, okay, fine. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Then see you uh, next. Thank week. you. Same time, same place, maybe different link, but you will receive it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <Thank> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. May, may I just stay uh, for a moment, if possible, with the partners of the two schools? So maybe Fatma and uh, someone from Iceland, uh, just to um, to speak two minutes of the translation of the uh, of the website. Okay. okay. Just of minutes. Okay. okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.